Luke chapter 15, I'd like to read a few verses from this particular chapter. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eat with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, and he loses one of them, and does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulder, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep, which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who needs no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, search carefully until she finds it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angel of God of one sinner who repents. Yes. Now, if you just turn quite uh, quickly with me, I'd like just to read three verses from Matthew chapter 28, starting with verse 18. Matthew chapter 28. We call it the Great Commission. Starting with verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore yes. and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you, Lord, tonight for the privilege and opportunity once again to share the word, your word. I pray that when the word go forth, it will fall upon the rich and good ground, and it will produce much fruit. I pray, God, for your anointing, your blessings upon my life, Lord, that I'll be a blessing to others. And Father, Lord, when I've said enough, Lord, may I sit down. And Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We can see your mighty hand at work, even in this meeting tonight. Lord, we sense your presence, and we just thank you. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, and let the church say, Amen. You may be seated. When heaven rejoices, when heaven rejoices, and by the way, let me just say it's a privilege, amen, to have met. Pastor Gray a few years ago, and this is indeed a man of God. Yes. He calls, and we call each other, and we have prayer over the phone, and we correspond together and labor together for the kingdom work. Amen. And I appreciate him. I appreciate his integrity, his trust, and I appreciate his friendship. Amen. 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 May the Lord continue to bless you and your congregation. And we were praying for to get more involved in prison ministry. Mm -hmm. And since uh, I met Pastor Gray, amen, and that's where his heart is, that's where his passion is, is in prison ministry. And we were able to, amen, work with him. We have people in our church, amen, that works with him in the prison ministry. And we appreciate that. Amen. Listen. We, amen, we have a desire to do more for those that are incarcerated. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The owner of a small crossword uh, road uh, store was appointed the local postmaster. But six months after his appointment, not one piece of mail had left the village. Mm. 
when concerned postal officials from Washington investigated the local postmaster, he explained, well, it's simple. The bag ain't full yet. <laughs> Once there was a church board that decided it wanted its congregation to grow numerically. An evangelism committee was chosen. The first thing that the committee did was read every book and article they could find on church growth. The second was to ask persons in the congregation what they thought of when they heard the word evangelism. They discovered that many people were unsure of what exactly evangelism is. Some had negative images, thinking evangelism is people in the streets shouting, repent, 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 or handing tracts out to strangers, it was something other churches did, but they said, but not our church. The evangelism committee was both surprised and challenged by the results of their informal survey. The committee understood evangelism as something Jesus commanded of all believers. They focus on Jesus' teaching when he said in Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son oh, yes. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Believing that the church should be always reaching out to others, they devised a plan to attract new people to their church. And that kind of sounds like that where we were. We felt like instead of looking inward all the time and just barely surviving and amen, looking at ourselves and, and, and just, you know, there's nothing wrong with that at a certain time, but we need to look upward and we need to look outward. Yes, yes, because when we look outside the four walls, we will become, we will look at it from the perspective of Christ. The Bible says that uh, when he looked upon the multitude, they were like sheep without a shepherd. He had compassion. Yes, yes, amen. And you see, that's what we have to pray as a church. And we, we cannot get so hung up in programs and hung up in every other thing, amen, and ministering to one another that we forget, amen, the mission of the church is not only to glorify God, but also to win lost souls. So full of enthusiasm, they shared their plan with the congregation only to, only to get a mixed reaction. Many of the members were like the postmaster who wouldn't deliver the mail until the bag was full. You would hear statements like this. Before we go after new members, we should try to win back members already on our roll. Some said, I like the church just the way it is now. Others said, someone summed it up best, who wants strangers in our church? We should just stick to our own. Now these are true statements here that churches make, people make, and expect their churches to grow. We see, when we, amen, when we begin to think like this and we begin to, amen, become again closed-minded and not reaching out, the church will eventually die. The church will eventually die. How many agree with me? Now I want you to go back with me some over 2,000 years. Jesus is enjoined a meal with some of the tax collectors. 
<laughs> and some other people we might call unchurched. The disciple Matthew had been a tax collector yes. before following Jesus. Maybe these were his friends. Jesus enjoyed being with people. Will you agree? If you read the scripture, Jesus enjoyed being with people. Even people on the fringes of society. Of course, some Pharisees were close by. And they saw Jesus eating with these people that they considered sinners. The Pharisees were obviously uncomfortable. For they were keepers of the Jewish tradition. They believed avoiding sinners and other outcasts of society was the only way to live a true and holy life. The Pharisees could not understand why Jesus ate with such people. They thought Jesus had a lot to learn about their tradition. Now, here's the first thing we need to see, brothers and sisters, and I'm trying to get across to all of our churches tonight. Jesus eating with sinners suggests that there may be people outside of God's family who are ready yes. to come in. You ever thought about that? Amen. amen. There might be people in your family and my family and people, amen, that we'll associate with each and every day in the marketplace and yes. on the job and the workplace. Amen. If we'll just let our light shine and be a witness, there may be some that is ready to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Am I talking to someone yes, here tonight? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord. You see, Jesus heard the grumbling and complaining of the Pharisees. In response, he told a parable about a shepherd who had 100 sheep. Yes. At the end of a long day, the shepherd was counting his sheep when he discovered that one was missing. He had a dilemma. I heard a person call me the other day and said, Pastor, I'm in a dilemma. Mm -hmm. I said, you're in a dilemma? I said, if it's a dilemma, only God probably can get you out of it. <laughs> you're calling the wrong person. Amen. But I understand he wanted me to agree with him in prayer, and he used that word dilemma. But in those days, amen, the shepherd, amen, when he lost one sheep, yes. that was very, very important. Yes, Very important. He, you know, he had to account for that one sheep that was lost. And he was in a dilemma. Mm. Amen. But look, look at this situation. Would any shepherd leave 99 sheep in the wilderness to search for one that was missing? Amen. Think about that. Yeah. Common sense would probably lead us to protect the 99 that were accounted for. But maybe that's why the Apostle Paul talked about the foolishness of God. You see, this shepherd leaves 99 sheep and he goes searching for the one that has gone astray. When the shepherd finds the one lost sheep, he probably looked everywhere. But when he finds the one lost sheep, he calls together his friends and neighbors saying to them, Rejoice yeah. with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. You see, Jesus was portraying God in a different light than the religious leaders and the Pharisees were accustomed of seeing. You see, uh, Harry Emerson Forty put it this way, he said, beneath this outstretching search of Jesus for the despised and outcast was a confound religious conviction that went beyond customary thinking. In other words, amen, Christ cared for those lost souls. Yes. He cared for lost souls. God values them. Yes. Yes. He has compassion for them. Yes. 
and he sought after them. Amen. Amen. Jesus said there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. We sang the song, Oh, how he loved you and me. We just finished celebrating Passion Week. Amen. We, 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 amen. We, 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 we let it led up. It led up to Good Friday, as we call it. Amen. Amen. The sixth to the ninth hour, Jesus hung his head and died at the ninth hour. And he suffered. Amen. Uh, he suffered and died. And then the, on Sunday morning, we celebrate his resurrection. All of these things in the church world. Amen. We emphasize and celebrate and remember. Amen. The Passover and communion and all of these things because God so loved you and I. Oh my God. Oh yeah, when we think about the cross. When you think about the cross. Amen. You see our sins and your sins and my sins. Amen. There was such a such a depravity of sin. Amen. So God so loved. He still loved Amen. He has saved us. Amen. To evangelize. 
someone else to the Lord. Your soul is enthusiastic and zealous. You want to tell somebody else what God has done for you. Amen? And see, the thing is, when you, when you see, see, your friends that have not received Christ, they wonder what happened to you. You're different now. Amen. You're not like you used to be. Amen. Then it opens the door wide open for, 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 the, for the one that's, that's been saved to tell them how much God has done in their life. And consequently, they win people to the Lord. Now, after they're in the church, nothing wrong with the church. We need to get into the church to get disciples, to grow in the knowledge. But but seem like when we get into the church, amen, the mission of the church is to keep you in confined to the church every night of the week. You don't no longer, you're oblivious to what's happening around you. And so you're surrounded, amen, with church folks. You see what I'm saying? Church folks. So what am I saying here? I'm saying this, it's okay to come to the church and to grow. Yeah and to mature and to celebrate, uh -huh. but, but we need to get out of the church. Yeah. Amen. Going into the village and the highways and byways and where we find ourselves and let our light shine and we will see more souls come to the Lord. Is this okay? See, what happened is we get into the church and we become... Uh, uh, yes, we're Christians, but we become church entity. In other words, we become ingrained in the church so much until we stop winning souls to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We stop, amen, growing. And you see, my friend Jesus, if we go back to the story, where did they find Jesus? Amen. They found him, amen, among the sinners. They found him among the they found him, amen, among those, amen, that need to be liberated, those that need to be healed, those that need to be delivered, and those that need to be ministered to. That's where they found Jesus. That's where he is. And that's where we need to be. Oh, 
my friend. Amen. We need to go right there and let our light shine. I remember in Oklahoma when I was younger, and I'm out of the area here. When I was in Oklahoma when I was younger, amen, I remember we had a work going on around the cloud. And what we did, what we did every Saturday, amen, the, we had a, a team that went out and witnessed, but I'd go to the gym. I'd go to the gym and play basketball. That's when I was young. <laughs> That's when I could run and I could play and I, could, I had a game. But you know what? I would go there every Saturday and I would play ball. And some of the most foul mouth. Some of the most, uh, well, they just didn't know God. Amen. I mean, they used the Lord's name in vain. And, you know, they were just, they would make mockery of Christianity and the church. And they were just, they were just terrible. I mean, they were just terrible, awful. But, but, every Saturday we play ball. They play ball. Then finally they start coming up and asking, who are you? Where you come from? You know, that just opened up the door for me and say, oh, look, we got a little work going on over here in Oklahoma. We're building a church. Mm -hmm. Boy, their eyes bumped in. Building a church? I said, yeah. I said, we're building a church, and I'm going to invite everyone to you to church. Mm -hmm. Boy, they said, oh, Lord, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And, but I was just sowing a little bit of seed. Yes, that's right. And they said, a couple of them said, well, I knew it was something different about you because you didn't curse. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it a couple of times and they found it. But they said, I knew it was something. I knew it was something. So you know what? I got every one of them that we played. We played ball with. They came to the church. Many of them got saved. One is named Vincent Collins. He's in Columbia, South Carolina. Got one of the biggest churches in the state. <laughs> biggest churches in the state. Vincent Collins. Amen. Building a new building, new edifices, and others. Amen. We just had a reunion a couple of years ago about that. In Oklahoma, those were saved and brought in. God did some miraculous things there. Why? Because we got out of our comfort zone. Yes. Yes. We got into the community Amen. and we let our light shine. Yes. That's what I've been telling yes. you. Yes. Yes. Don't get caught up in church anity. Just, just every time you look around, there's some kind of meeting in the church, there's a committee meeting, there's a usher meeting, there's not this kind of meeting, there's that kind of meeting, yeah. and this kind of meeting. And now it's not out doing the work of God. Yes. You can be busy doing church God just did for you. Hallelujah. Take it outside of you. Share. Share with those that are hurting. There's a lot of hurting out there in the community. Let us stand together. I wish I could finish this, but I, I, I you see, Jesus demonstrated, I want to say this in my closing. Jesus demonstrated how much God loves all people. Somebody say all. All people. Amen. And how gladly and joyfully he welcomes back the wayward and the lost children. You see, there are some who have strayed away, but they're ready to come back. And brothers and sisters, when they come back, let's welcome them. Amen. Let's welcome them. Amen. You see, the church, really the church has lost its primary focus when we fail to search for those who are outside of our fellowship. Hallelujah. Far too many churches, all the energy, as I've said before, and the focus has been on members inside the church. And we have forgotten about those outside the fold. Pastors, if we don't watch ourselves, if we're not winning, we're not growing, we'll find ourselves always putting out fire. 
putting out church fire. Don't you know if you're around each other all the time, don't you know if the church never grows, you see any new faces? Don't you know if you're just around people 30, 40 years, you can't even get along with each other? We need some new faces. We need some new people. Amen. That will be blessed of God and pay their tithe and support the work of God. See them grow in the Lord. Amen. I tell my yeah, I say the same thing. I say, you know what? Y'all been around each other. Get out and win some souls. Get out and win some souls. Get busy winning souls. Amen. They would be too busy to, to complain about little old minor things that takes our focus away from winning souls. Come on, you know what I mean. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you tonight. I shared, Lord God, a little bit about evangelism. There's so much I can say. But God, I just thank you, Lord, and I pray, God, that those that, amen, that heard this message tonight, it will give them the thinking, Lord. What is my purpose? What is my purpose for being in the church? What is my purpose that, amen, that have been saved and touched with the power of God? Amen. Lord, am I carrying out the great commission? Lord, am I being used in these last days? Lord, am I seeing the results? Amen. Amen. You said, Lord, that the Lord of the harvest would pray that there be more labors in the vineyard. Lord, I want to be available. Availability is so important, Lord. I want to be available. I want to be ready, Lord. I want to be witnessing. I want to be letting my light shine. And we'll thank you for it. But you know what? One of the keys to being a good witness is that you spend alone, spend some time with God. Amen. Every day, read your word. Every day, pray. Every day, spend some time with God. And God will speak to you. He will direct you. Because there's a lot of hurting souls out there. And I guarantee you, He'll direct you. He'll direct you. And you'll say, ha, ah, this is a time to let my light shine. Matter of fact, I ought to be a way of life to all of us. Amen. There's not a time to turn the light switch on and turn it off. It should be a way of life. Yeah. Amen. People that, when you walk into a room, listen, don't walk, don't walk in a room or somewhere. That, don't, don't walk in with your head down and your shoulders drooping. And don't don't let the thought get to your mind, well, there's a bunch of sinners. You know, I, what am I doing here? You walk in there and like you a child of God with you all. Hallelujah. Amen. You walk in like you own the place. Yes, that's right. You walk in there like you own the place. And somebody's gonna notice you. They're gonna notice, amen, that you've been with God. And let me just say this. We'll turn my mic over. Somebody the other day was discussing spirituality. And somebody came up with a, a statement that I kind of like. They were talking about what, what, what defines a spiritual person. You know. Somebody said, well, when I think of Jesus, everywhere he went, people kind of followed him. Common people said everywhere he went, he made a difference. You know what spirituality is? Spirituality is this man here when he goes into the prison or invites, amen, people that don't know Christ. If you got, let me say, if you got a few unsaved friends, ain't gonna belong for they gonna get saved. Now you don't let them drag you in what they're doing. That's right. That's but the most spiritual person is the one that wins soul. Yes. Is that when you have sinners yes. delight to be around you. Yes. Amen. Yes. You, you come into church and shout, jump, bounce off the walls all you want to. If you're not winning, if you're not influencing those around you, it's null and void. You're just having a good time. Amen. Amen. The thing is, you pray every day, Lord, direct me. 
lead and guide me. Yes. Somebody to some say, may they see the yes. smile. Yes. May they see, yes. Lord God, Jesus in my life. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.